Okay. So, uh, so what brings you to Omegle? You know, at the beginning, I think it was just trying to find people to play like Animal Crossing or whatever. And I did find someone. We still talk nowadays. Um, it was also to talk about like just um, anything, dude. Music, video games. Uh, the dude that I talked. Yeah, you know the dude that I talked about. We talked about like drugs for forty minutes. <laughs> oh, that must have been fun, dude. I've, I've met so many, so many like people from around the world and stuff, and. I haven't really gotten into any like drug talk with people. Actually, yeah, very difficult. I found another dude who talked a lot about his like sexuality and you know all the all the relationships that he's had. And, you know, you know, very interesting. With the right tags, you can find the right people. That's for <laughs> sure. Well, for you, like, what what is something that um, do you usually listen or do you ask the question? Do you like talk or do you like to ask the questions? I usually let them talk. I usually let them talk. Depends. For, for video games, I usually talk to them because, you know, I'm pretty knowledgeable about it. Um, for the dude who is a little, you know, exploring the cosmos in his own brain, I let him talk a lot. Mostly because he was just, you know, he had a lot to talk about. Yeah, a lot to process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for you, like, what have been some major experiences that you've had or some lessons that you've learned through taking drugs um well think about that i learned that you know because i always i always had a trouble with my anxiety and i still do you know i've noticed that the reason for why you you i always got worked up and had like panic attacks and stuff like that was because i overthought a lot you know it starts off with one little thing that trips you up whether it's what someone said or you're just in like a moment or it gets too quiet. That, that was something for me, you know, cause I had, a, I have a lot of anxiety about like my heart and like when you have a panic attack, you get like a fight or flight response. So you start getting like palpitations and that just makes it worse. Cause you start to think, Oh, I'm having a heart attack. I think I'm going to die. But there would also be time for I'm very relaxed and I wouldn't hear it. So it would freak me out then. So there was really no escape. It was if it was too quiet or if it was too loud, I would start to like overthink. Oh shit! Did it stop? <laughs> and with hindsight, that's a pretty stupid idea. If your heart stopped, you're probably not going to notice because you're probably already dead by that point. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it, it's all in your head. It really is. And when I did, you know, those types of things, um, you're, you're in your head a lot, and you're, you you think a lot more, but you think in a much more different way. You know, your emotion, people describe it as your emotions start to have, like, they start to echo in your room. The, the feelings, the sensations you have, they start to personalize. They start to get, you know, what's the word? Hmm. They start to, like, penetrate your unconscious. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the word when something, when an inanimate object has human, like, person. Oh, it anthropomorphizes it. That too. Yeah, there we go. That's the word. That's the word. Yeah. Everything just, it starts to echo in your own environment. So, you know, when I did it the first time towards the beginning, it was, it was very like surreal. I was just waiting for it to kick in, you know, for the first 30 minutes, you kind of, nothing really happens because it hasn't really processed yet. Um, but then over time you start to feel like really warm. Um, you start to feel pretty much every, you know, you start to feel the, the ruffle in your clothing. So you try your best not to move. Um, then you start to, you know, start to think about politics, fucking aliens, anything. <laughs> I love how they're right next to each other. <laughs> yeah, of course. They're basically the same thing. Exactly. So then I went outside. I was texting my friend because he had experienced it before. He had a lot more experience with it. So I was texting her. And she told me to watch uh, like Peter Pan or something, you know, I don't know why she just thought about it. So I watched it halfway through. I started to realize, you know what? I'm not paying attention. I really am not. I don't know what's going on. The, the animation was really surreal. I should have watched like Alice in Wonderland. That would have been a better idea. But anyways, I went outside. At this point, I was like in ecstasy. I was I was feeling amazing. And. You, you looked outside, and I live in Florida, 
and there's a lot of light pollution where I'm at. So there weren't really a lot of stars. There was like two. And then I saw, I started seeing them move together and they started like spinning. It was a, it was a very beautiful experience. Then I, then I got like, I, I saw a cat and I like nearly shit myself. So I ran back in my house. The cat wasn't really doing anything. He was just standing there. But the, yeah, I went back inside my house. I don't know if I did too much. I probably just like watched YouTube back then. You know, I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have just stayed outside in nature. Probably should have absorbed a lot more. But the next few times, that's when, you know, I started being a lot more introspective. For example, uh, the third time that I did it, and I've done it a total of four times. So I'm, you know, inexperienced compared to most people. Uh, third time, I was watching a video about, uh, you know, man versus food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was watching him. I don't even know why I picked such a terrible idea, but I was watching him, and you know, in those in that in those episodes, they always get close up shots of him with his mouth filled with whatever the hell he's eating, bacon and cheese. Remind, really is gross. Anthony, is this Anthony Bourdain? Anthony Bourdain. You know what? Is let me he think the guy thing. who is he the guy who killed himself? That guy or no? No, it's not this guy. It's not okay. this guy. I don't think so. No, no, no. It wasn't this guy. Okay. Just, I'm pretty sure he's still alive. He just, he just stopped making the the, the show because he said he had like heart problems. But anyways, they always have these close-up shots of him eating like a savage, and you know, with with these types of chemicals, they change a lot the way you perceive reality. So you know, you always see these movies. The the room starts fucking spinning. The hands start melting, and to some extent, that is true. You know, you do feel like your walls are breathing or that the trees are like moving with you or something. In this case, his eyes kept getting bigger for me. And that really freaked me out. That was unbelievably creepy. So I ran into my like uh, bathroom to take a shower and I had my phone with me and I put it there and I saw like a, a demon inside of my phone. And that, that fucks with you. So I basically, <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, yep, I am unbelievably high. So I ran out of the bathroom and, you know, because I knew a lot about it, I knew how to real calm myself down. It's very similar to how you calm yourself in a panic attack. You just have to remind yourself that you're, you know, under the influence of a really powerful drug and you just had to learn to calm yourself. And so I did. I never touched my phone for the rest of the six hours that I was there because it, it was a very unpleasant experience. It was probably the worst, one of the worst moments of my life, really. But it, it, it just teaches you how, how, how fucked up your mind gets when you're all alone and you're just thinking. When you're alone by yourself, just thinking. Wow. So, so f now, now where you are in life and stuff, like and processing these experiences what is something that you've taken away from it that you that you i notice that i like overthink a lot and i'm in my head a lot and i don't i focus on small shit that's going on in the moment or rather no i don't i don't think about what's going on in the moment i think about what's going to happen you know you think too too far ahead and you think ahead all the time and you you know that stresses you out. It really does. And after I did that, you know, I took a hiatus. I didn't do it anymore for a long time. Um, I stopped smoking. I stopped doing all this stuff because uh, my anxiety just started getting worse. It started getting really bad because it, was, it, it just got really absurd because I'm most of the time in my room alone because, you know, now with, with school and what's going on right now, I just, I'm not really outside a lot and you're in your head a lot. And when you overthink like that, you know, most of the time I'm home alone as well. So there's really no one to call. Um, I got sent to the hospital multiple times because I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I had like heart problems that I had arrhythmia or that I was going to die. None of that was true. Of course, you know, they did a bunch of tests on me. It's all, it, it really is all in my head. I've, I've learned to calm myself down from that. I'm, I've learned to stop thinking about that so much you know 
because it really gets you nowhere. There's no benefit to me thinking about that stuff all the time. Mm. 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 Would you mind kind of sharing your story as to your living situation? Um, and, uh, and, and that your, your story, your story in that respect. You know, so I was born in Spain. Um, both of my parents are from Cuba, not a very rich country as you can probably imagine, but we came to America. Um, and my living situation is fine. Both of my parents, they are divorced, but, um, I see them both very often. Uh, they both have jobs. They, you know, they both, they're both having a stable life and I'm completely okay with it. Uh, I don't remember a lot from Spain because I, I came here when I was like four. So I've been here for maybe 11 years now here in America. So, yeah, it's been pretty normal. I lived with my grandma for a few years because they were having, you know, when they were going through the divorce, I couldn't fucking handle them screaming all the time. But now it's been, it's been pretty, it's been pretty good, you know. Was that, was that process, the, the divorce, um, like, uh, was, was that very difficult for you? And, and how have you, where are you now with it in your, in your processing of that? At the time it was super rough because they were, it was not a, it was not a very common divorce. Not, not many are, but it was very rough during that beginning time. Cause I was very young. I might've been like seven or eight, maybe, um, I didn't deal with it too much. I tried to stay in my room most of the time when they were, you know, arguing and shit. Because my sister was usually outside there. Because my sister is five years older than me. So she was about 13 at the time. Uh, 13, 14. Yeah, that sounds about right. And, you know, I, I would try to stay alone. But obviously my curiosity would get the better of me. You know, seven-year-old kid. And it, it was pretty bad back then. It was going back and forth. And at the time, they gave me the option of who to live with. Oh, that's hard. That is hard. Like a part of me likes that they gave me the choice, but another part is like, you know, how could you give a seven year old kid a decision like that? They can't make that proper decision for themselves. So at the time I picked my mom, I would see my dad every weekend. Then I stayed with my grandma for like a year and a half, went back with my mom. Uh, my sister went with her, with my dad. Then eventually, when she got old enough, she moved out, you know, not her own apartment, you know, when she became an adult. And now, currently, I'm just living with my mom. I have a pretty good relationship with the both of them. Can't say the same for my sister, but, you know, that's her issue. Is, is it her choice to kind of, that she's, is she stepping away? Is that kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this was when she was 14 to 16 years old when it was going down. So she obviously thought... It was her job to, you know, help them out. Now she's 20-something. She doesn't care about that no more. She knows better than to get into that. Plus, they're both separated. It's both... All that stuff ended. She's got her own boyfriend. She's got her own place. Wow. Well, yeah. So, thank you for thank you for sharing your story. Um, do you have no any, any um, thoughts or... Um, advice for, of maybe some other people who have gone through that that are listening to this um, in hindsight, looking back? Ooh, let me think about that for a moment. I think you shouldn't get so caught up in it. You know, I was really young back then, so for me, you know, thinking like a seven-year-old, oh, my mom and dad separating? <laughs> that can't happen. Um, you shouldn't think it's like the end of the world for that, you know, and you shouldn't think that you're not going to see them ever again for any reason. You know, obviously if they've been abusive to you or whatever, you know, that's a different story, but if they're both, you know, they're just not compatible with each other. I didn't think at the time it was my fault, but at the time I thought that the reason why it got so bad was because of me, because they were fighting over, you know, custody and stuff like that. You know, you, you can't, you can't think like that. The reason why they're fighting over you is because in the end of the day, they both love you and they both want you to be with them. And it should be up to the kid 
if they're old enough to make the decision for themselves. But they, they shouldn't get caught up with, you know, are they going to hate me if I don't pick them or anything? You know, parents don't think like that at the end of the day, yeah. Dude, thank you for being so vulnerable and open, man. Dude, <laughs> wonderful. I mean, that's strength. Yeah. That's pretty freaking cool, man. It's pretty freaking cool. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, um, so usually the people that I have on, I, I have pre-written questions here uh, that I ask people. Um, mm -hmm. I have a bunch of them, but I only ask three. Um, so if you could choose three numbers between 1 and 48, I'll ask you the corresponding questions. Okay, here we go. All right. Seven. Thirteen. Twenty-two. What uh, what name could I use for this video? You can use a code name, or you could use your first name, or whatever. Yeah, you can just put a uh, chatting with, and then you can put leave on auto spell. Okay, 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 okay. I can't spell it. Leave it to pronounce Andreas. So here we are. Andreas, great. Okay. Yeah. All right, number seven. What does it mean to be a one more time? What does it mean to be a good listener? Ooh. To be a good listener. It's to put your, to imagine yourself asking the same questions. Really just put yourself in their shoes. And to be a good listener, you also have to be a good, good at answering them, good, in, good at answering the questions that you're asked, you know? And not just not just listening, but paying attention, and yeah, just that. Great, great. Number thirteen. Uh, okay. I I worded this question really badly. I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it how I wrote it, and then I'm gonna rephrase it because. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What is your relationship like with change? Meaning, okay. Um, when change happens in your life, how do you approach it? Or mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with it? So when it started with my uh, with my parents, change was really hard for me because it was it was like choosing. You know, I couldn't live with both of them anymore. That was that was just out of the question. So at the time I took it very negatively at the time. I really didn't want them to separate as most kids don't, you know, most kids want them to stay together, but with hindsight, it was for the better, you know, because if they're not together, then they can't argue with each other. They can't do all this stuff. Now I've learned to really accept change and just go with the flow, especially my experience with it. Um, substances, you know, you just have to learn to not think about the future, but rather think in the present moment and just, just write it out. Yeah. The idea of this too shall pass. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, you know, nothing is forever that that's really important. Everything that's, is temporary. That's a tough, that's so hard to accept. Um, it's hard to accept. Well, it may be easy to accept that theoretically, right? But then mm -hmm. to accept it, but then also to live a life that where you make choices and put yourself out there and to still accept it. Like, Very difficult. To Very still difficult. like go out there and, and meet, you know, a partner that you love to accept that this too shall pass is, yeah, it's, it's, you know. Yeah, when when you think that way, it can put you in a very nihilistic point of view that like nothing really matters if nothing is forever. You know, I used to think like that a lot. I used to think like, you know, if if nothing lasts forever, what's the point? You know, I, always, people always have thoughts about their mortality and religion and, you know, all this stuff. It, it gets you. It really, it really fucks you up. 
to think like that, to think that, you know, nothing, nothing is going to last. But, you know, I, I always hate it when people say, you know, well, because it doesn't last, that's what makes it precious. And they're right. That's true. But it usually doesn't help someone when you say that. <laughs> right. Totally. Absolutely. I mean, it's true, but it's also like, fuck you, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, true. <laughs> like, okay, cool. So the precious <laughs> yeah. thing will leave them. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for, yeah. Yeah. Rubbing it in. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Cool. Yeah. Man. Last question here, Andreas. All right. What is something you really want to do? Oh, man. I want to... I was always researching... Uh, you know, I always talk to you about those people that I talked about on LSD and all that stuff. And though those talking about those kinds of substances, psychedelics in general were fun. The real reason I wanted to learn about them was because how it affected someone's mind, how it could, you know, all these studies about how it would help people quit smoking, how it cured people's depression. You know, you can't say that for most drugs, even for drugs, like, you know, things that help with serotonin, SSRIs, things that help with medications that your doctor gives for depression. Most of these times, these things fail. Or worse, they get addicted to it and their symptoms only get worse. But it wasn't the same with psychedelics. Now, I wasn't blind to it. I knew that it could still be abused. It was still, at the end of the day, a drug. But I wanted to learn more about it. And a lot of people described it as when people meditate, when they reach something called nirvana or enlightenment, they always talk about these these stories in Hinduism and Buddhism about people just being in their, separating their, their individuality and becoming one with everything. But, you know, they always use these bud words like everything, universal, let go of yourself. But what did that really mean? And when I took these substances and when I talked to people who took them, it makes a lot more sense. You know, for people who, who meditate, it's different. For people who meditate, obviously, they can stop themselves at any point. They just have to stop meditating. But for these drugs, you can't fight it. It kind of just happens. You can't really fight it off. And it can be very scary to lose yourself because most people describe it as dying and being reborn. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, losing something that they call it ego dissolution. Ego is controlled somewhere in the default mode network of the brain, little tiny part. It controls how you perceive the world and how you perceive the environment and how you perceive how it affects you as an individual. And when you take these substances, it kind of changes. It almost turns off. So you stop seeing everything around you as not you. And you stop seeing yourself as an individual. You start to become connected to everything. And it can be very scary, but it can also be very beautiful in a way that you're part of one you're part of all so that's beautiful man you gotta write dude i don't know if you write but like if you don't you you have to man that's yeah. beautiful you're so yeah you're so yeah you're so um grounded in your words you know and in your thoughts thank you man i try so 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 when it comes to, so i i feel like you were you were um you were processing a lot there. So connecting it back to that question, what is something you really want to do? I want to learn more about the, the consciousness in general. That's what I want to do. Um, I want to learn more about how the brain works. So in that case, I guess you could say I'm interested in a lot in psychology and neurology and all that type of stuff. But, you know, I, you know, before the, I took these things, I was very unreligious. I was mostly an atheist. And to some extent, I, I wouldn't say that I'm part of any religion now because, you know, I used to be a Christian, but then I realized, yeah, Christianity is great, but that book that we read has been translated a thousand times. So how, how factual really is it? You know, I always agreed with certain religions viewpoints, be a good person, be kind to others. You know, these, all religions have these for the most part, 
but the idea of worshiping one person and saying all your uh, all other gods are wrong this is the right religion that's what they all say of course and i know they say it from a good from a good point you know i know they just want people to be connected in their community and all that kind of stuff but i don't i don't really believe in that i do believe there is something more than just the world came out of nothing out of a a infinitesimal point of light that exploded i don't believe that's true um i believe that you know humanity can become a lot more enlightened through being not just in a community but also being connected to everything you know it sounds like a lot like a hippie but it is true you know you you have to learn to to let go of your of your pride of your honor of your patriotism and just be part of everything you know you don't have to hold grudges towards people because of what they look like or what they believe in you don't have to say that they're wrong or that they're going to hell or that you know the reason why you're depressed is because of this or that i feel like people can learn a lot about studying the way their brain works and the way that your mind tricks you and just learn to be in the present moment and to not not let your mind be jogged down by all those type of things so i just want to learn more about the brain consciousness the way that we think you know meditation was a very good thing for me it helped me a lot um obviously trying those substances it gives you a lot of insight into how the way you think and how it how it affects you you know and i'm a firm believer that your environment it really affects the way you are that it has a great a great what's the word it has a major influence on your thoughts on your on your personality it has a major influence that's what it is you know your environment and the people surrounding you it changes the way you are mm-hmm. but you, well, but the way you think in your head also does as well uh, mm-hmm. rec- I'm going to s- shoot over some recommendations, some book recommendations. Yeah. I don't sure, know if, if you have read any of these. Um, and uh, also, uh, that's a documentary. That's on Netflix, Becoming Nobody. Oh, yeah, man. If you haven't seen Becoming Nobody... Oh, I actually have nothing. Oh, you will. You'll just do. I watched it twice. I watched it two times in a row. After it was over, I was like, "Oh yeah, I just feel so cleansed and so um, All right. validated." You know, like everything that you're saying is is stuff that I believe in too. Um, and uh, and sometimes it feels as though. I'm very lonely because I believe this and because I talk about these things and 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 reading these books and watching this documentary just made me feel so more much more at peace and made me feel so much more sane <laughs> or at least or at least that that the 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 signs or the lessons that I've learned are not just these random events that I made up in my head you know um and I feel like as time goes on and the more you surround yourself with normal people, you like the more ostracized you feel, you know, and um, and uh, I just, you know, would like to encourage you to keep going on this path and um, to keep exploring, you know, your essence and not your labels, you know. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I think at, at that, um, I think that's. That's where we'll end. Unless you, you would, do you have any last thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience? No, I think I'm all right. That was doubt. <laughs> really good conversation, man. Had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. Definitely going to be watching this documentary now. Yeah, I didn't know and, this existed. And uh, also, if you if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to post this video. It'll be up in 15 minutes, um, and. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I clicked on it when you told me. Yeah. Awesome. And if you ever want to uh, talk again, it would be awesome to, to, you know, after you watch the documentary and maybe 
think about some more things. I'd love to have um, a con another conversation with you, just like explain yeah, some more of these thoughts and, you know, just yeah, man, processing definitely. it, you know? Right on. All right, dude. Hey, well, you take care. Andre, Florida, right? That's what we'll say. Sure. Why not? All right, man. Take care. You too, man.